guys! My name is the Looney Spoonie and this is the community that you found for raw, real, honest, and positive Spoonie related things. On a more micro idea of what I want to do here, I was diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis when I was 26 years old. I'm 39 now. And I had about, I would say, about seven or eight years, I would say about seven years that I just didn't pay attention to my doctors. They gave me a very real and raw idea. I mean, I say very real and raw. They gave me the Cliff Notes version of what could happen to me. And I kind of blew it off. I felt like my life's moving. I'm doing okay now. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And the problem was that bridge did not sneak up on me. That bridge was like, there was the bridge. And once I walked over it, I, I, my life was never the same. And here's the thing. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a therapist. But I'm somebody who's going through what you're going through enough. I'm somebody who knows chronic pain. There is never a moment in my life that I'm not in pain. In fact, filming this is incredibly difficult for me because the way that I deal with my pain is I shake. I constantly shake my leg, shake my arm. Usually it's my leg though. And I do it because like if you slammed your finger in the car door or in the front door, what's the first thing you do? I mean, you shake your hand, you run around, anything so that your brain doesn't have to focus on that pain. That's 24 seven up in here. So I shake a lot, not giving you motion sickness, bouncing up and down my gift to you. <laughs> um, but when I first got bad, really, and it comes with, I was diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis, fibromyalgia, Ehlers-Danlos, and what I like to call is your door prize diseases that come with autoimmune, like, Oh, why do I feel like somebody put glass under my eye? Well, <laughs> that's because your eyes are so dry, your eyelid stuck to your eyeball in the middle of the night, and when you opened them up, you just tore a hole right in that cornea. I don't mean. It's, it's just kind of all these little things that you're like, is it not bad enough? How much more do we really need? And... I found the Spoonie community and I've been tr I had been trying to explain it to my family why I cancel plans at the last minute, why I can't do the things that they want, why working was so difficult, why I gave so much. So, here's the thing, if you are a chronic illness or chronic pain sufferer, you have masks. You have an array of masks for your emotions, what you need to display, I'm okay. I'm fine. I can do this. Don't worry about me. We will never, we never let, e let anybody else into our darkness. Ever. So what I am is I am somebody like you trying to link enough arms together to go down the rapids with somebody else for a chance of survival. I want to link arms with people who know what it feels like remember the places that they were in because when I first joined the Spoonie community I had great experiences. My name! I chose Looney Spoonie because I believe in being a Spoonie. I had some bad experiences too. I had a lot of experiences where when you finally let a little darkness out to people who you think are gonna understand your pain and it's a barrage of, well, it could be worse, at least you're not this bad. It makes you, you're already scared to share that with people because you're all, I know we're all, we're all at this place where we're like, am I lazy? This has been going on for so long. It's, it's got to be something. I just have to be lazy. Maybe I'm just, maybe I just need to suck it up. So when somebody else tells you it could be worse, that gets in your head and you really start going, I am lazy. Why am I letting this ruin me? You're not. You're not. This is a terrible, 
terrible thing. It's pain at its most raw and its most real. And it will, you will lose friends, you will lose family. People will not understand. And those of us who are going through it know that you're just looking for a safe haven, a set of eyes that say, my pain recognizes your pain. Because I have said it and I will always say it, pain recognizes pain. And you should be able to go into a community and have people say, I remember what you're going through. I knew how that felt. Oh, you know what? I felt the same way when I was in that place. Somewhere where you can share your knowledge, share your love, share your kindness, share your positivity, and even share your bad times. Like I said, we don't share our darkness at all. My husband is the closest person to know how bad it is. Like right now, I did my makeup. I got pretty for you guys. I set my cameras up and my lights up and I wanted to film a video. And it took all day, all day. But what you see is somebody put together. It's a, we are living invisible illnesses. I drive through my drive through to get my prescriptions. And my prescriptions are to provide me a quality of life. And I look fine. If I drive through, I actually, <laughs> I actually wrote a note to my pharmacist. It was of my own accord. But pharmacists have licenses. And they have to make decisions. And I really actually wrote them a note and said, I know I look fine driving through, but this is why I need these medications. I'm not saying to do it. This is what I did. And I think my, my pharmacist understood as much as they can. We are on this island together, right? This chronic illness island. And there's a shore. And everybody that we love and everybody that cares about us are just waving from that shore, making sure we know that they love us. But nobody is going to know what it feels like to live on that island but everybody else. And I want this to be an island where not only are we positive, but when I am having a bad day, you know those days. <laughs> those breakdowns. You know those breakdowns when it's been four, five, six, seven days of constant pain just to where you can't focus, you can't speak. My husband calls it pain brain. He's like, it's gibberish when it comes out of your mouth. Just absolute gibberish because there's no focusing on anything else but the pain or survival. Survival is what we're focusing on. And my son, who will be 21 in June, he was going through a rough spot mentally and he confided in some kids his own age who told him, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't go through that. And as mad as that made me, when he first told me, I was like, who the are these kids to tell you this isn't normal? Anybody who tells you that is lying. But I also realized that those kids might not know what to do with their own pain. And in a world of curated lifestyles of Instagram and, and YouTube and all of these places, and I know I'm using the platform. I hope it's used for the reason my heart wanted to create it, which was to make sure that you knew that it was okay. And I knew that if people were making my son feel that badly about the, the deep, dark business of being human, I knew, because I feel it too, but I knew there were spoonies out there. There were chronically ill and chronically in pain people who were being made to feel bad about how they're feeling, that their pain isn't enough pain, that their, their sadness isn't enough sadness, that you don't compare to me and she doesn't compare to her. And the bottom line is everybody is always going to have it worse than you and there's always somebody that's going to have it better than you. And when somebody has it worse than you, I hope that you say, I'm sorry. 
I see you. I feel you. I want you to know that I am thinking about you and sending you positivity. As opposed to, well, it could be worse. Well, you should hear what I have. But I don't want anybody to be made to feel bad about letting that darkness out. I'm going to tell you a quick story. My best friend in the whole life world since I was little, little, um, middle school, we actually became really best friends in high school because that first day in freshman year, when you get to lunch and you are just scanning, 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 and you're like, please, please, God, let me find somebody I know. And you lock eyes with somebody, I don't care if you are best friends with them or you barely know them, they turn around and if you see that same look, you're like, we're in it together. And that was us. She was the one that would make fun of me and not be afraid to get popped in the mouth. Um, and today we still, we still see each other. We carve out time. She lives two hours from me and we'll visit each other. She comes down and visits me more because she knows it's hard for me. But she has some back problems too. And she always feels like she needs to preface our conversations with, I know it's not bad as you, or I know it's not as bad as what you're going through. And I still, still have to tell her, stop, stop that. My pain does not invalidate your pain. Nobody's pain invalidates your pain, period, done, that's it. If you hurt, you hurt. If you're crying, you're crying. If it makes you feel on the edge, that's your pain and nobody can take that from you. And I just hope that we can, we can make people feel like their feelings are legitimate. One person, two person, three people, four people. For people who love others who are in chronic pain or have chronic illness. As a way to kind of peek back behind the curtain of that darkness. The darkness that they won't show you because even if you see darkness. And I've asked my... <laughs> I've asked my husband and my son not to watch this channel because I can't be true. I can't let all my darkness out. I can't really, really be real because I can't manufacture that. Pain does see pain. And if I manufactured those times, you would see it. And I will not do that to you. But to be able to be honest, I had to ask them not to watch because I can't let them in. To me, it serves no purpose than to break their heart. And I don't want to break anybody else's heart, but what I want is if you want a little bit of a better understanding into how your loved one might be feeling, why they don't text you back, even though you know they have their phone or you know they looked at the messages or they posted something on Facebook. Me, me personally, I write. That's, I exercise it through writing. And sometimes I'll post it to Facebook. And even though I have messages, I can't even focus on those. I just want to exercise my pain onto that page for others to absorb. And then I need to just stop. Because that's all I have in me. And that's okay. So, I want to let it out. I want to be messy. I want to be angry and mad and sad and frustrated and I want to show you the gambit and I want to, I want to make you laugh and I want to help you when you cry and don't think that after every single video there will not be a link to the suicide prevention hotline and I won't take it off because I know. I know that at some point it may happen that thought may creep into your head or somebody else's head and if you know the phone number if you can look back on a video I want it to be there for you because I know so oh, all right Reel it in, we got a little bit real, 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 real there. But that's what I want to do for you. 
because let me give you a visual of what's going to happen after this. I'm going to close this up. I'm going to shut off my lights. And I am done for the day. I am not going to be able to move. I'm already bouncing. I can, <laughs> I can feel myself bouncing. Did you catch it? Did you clock it? I was bouncing. My main focus is chronic illness, chronic pain, helping you through being an arm linked together as we go down the rapid of chronic illness and chronic pain. We are stronger together, baby. We are. And I know it's isolating. It is an isolating disease and that's why I want to reach out to you because I have felt isolated. I have a loving husband. I have a loving son. My husband is a wonderful support system. But I have lost friends. I have lost family. Because understanding this life, understanding what we're going through, and really understanding that what we show you, what we show others, is probably 5% of our pain. You know it and I know it. So I want to, I want to be real and I want to create a community that's real. And I want everybody in that community to feel a warmth and a love and an embrace and I want them to feel safe. So I'm going to let you go. This was a little all over the place and I promise I'll get the hang of it. I'll get better. But until then, I just want to let you know that my pain recognizes your pain and I see you.